Hello and a happy new year. Um, this has been the first video for a while. Uh, there's been a couple of reasons for that. Partly Christmas and partly uh, since I saw the spoilers for the new set I wanted to wait until I got my hand on the new cards. Um, the most significant of which for LED Dredge is this card, Ox of Agonis, uh, if you're not aware of what the card does. It is basically like the, the back half of a Faithless looting, but it requires exiling eight other cards from the graveyard. Um, and you play pay red red rather than um, two and a red, which makes it more doable um, from the graveyard when you're slow dredging. You more often have two lands than three. It's very rare that you just have three lands that you can just tap to flashback lootings. Um, and when it enters the battlefield, you discard your hand and draw three, which is obviously an extra card compared to Faithless Looting. Um, obviously, this has got people very exciting. It's not very often Dredge gets new toys uh, since Hogak was printed. That was a significant improvement to the deck, while the overall structure of the deck didn't change very much, partly because it's such a good fit for the deck. Uh, it just sort of slotted straight in as a one-off. Um, this ox is a bit different. It requires a few changes to the deck to get its full potential. Um, a couple of things to think about. Street Wraith gets better with Ox of Agonis because of hands where you have, for example, Lion's Eye Diamond, Ox of Agonis, Grave Troll, Street Wraith. You no longer need a land. You can just go, I'm going to uh, discard my hand, Lion's Eye Diamond, uh, cycle Street Wraith, crack Lion's Eye Diamond for red in response to the Street Wraith cycle, discard that, then flashback Ox of Agonis. This does have a couple of downsides, partly that if you're opening hand is um let's say you keep a seven with the street wraith and a grave troll and an ox you'd be not have too many cards left over in the graveyard that you want to exile um eight is a lot and you sometimes end up in situations early on in the game where you end up having to exile things that you wouldn't necessarily want to, like Golgari Thugs, Icarids, Cabal Therapies, Bridge from Blows, the sort of cards that you don't want to have to get rid of. You, you end up sometimes having to get rid of those. Um, and, um, yeah. So that's one of the potential changes that this card can make to the deck. The other obvious thing is... Um, it makes main deck Dread Return better because you can play sort of the old style of having a Cephalid Sage in the deck. Um, this is sort of now like a Cephalid Sage that you can also flashback if you've got mana. So it can just be like, you got no mana, you just Dread Return it. You don't have, you have mana, you can cast it from the graveyard. That potentially frees up sideboard space. You can bring Dread Returns into the main deck. Uh, meaning you no longer have to have one in the sideboard. Um, yeah, it, it also potentially makes uh, Careful Study better, because now when you have Careful Study, Lion's Eye Diamond and a land, you have a higher chance of hitting Faithless Looting off of the Careful Study dredges, which makes potentially going up more Careful Studies better. So there's a lot of things to think about with this card. Um, this is going to be a list, not necessarily what I'd recommend taking to a tournament. This is mostly just a list to uh, showcase the card. Um, we've got um, one less Icarid than normal. We're running three rather than four, but three is defensible. Uh, we've got two Oxes. We've taken out a Putrid Imp and then the Flex slot, which was either a Street Wraith. Uh, I've been trying Lotus Petals in that slot. Um, but today we've got two oxen, so take out an Icarid, uh, a Putrid Imp and whatever you were sort of flexing, which was either Careful Study Street Wraith or Lotus Petal was the most common cards I was seeing flexed in those slots, for two oxes. Uh, the sideboard, the sideboard's a bit different from normal as well, partly because of the current state of the MTGO meta, and partly because of Ox of Agonis. We've got a second Dread Return, so we have two Dread Returns. What does this let you do? This lets you go crazy. You can flip your whole deck, and then 
you're guaranteed to be able to use the other dread return to bring back um, whatever target you brought in. This is mostly for combo. Um, you bring in the second dread return and the Iona, and then you just aim to just use the first dread return to bring back one of the Ox, and then the second dread return to bring back Iona and just lock out the game. Um, no Silent Gravestones. Obviously, Silent Gravestone doesn't work very well with dread return, but um, mostly that's because online, all of the Miracles decks have sort of gone away from running any copies of the card Surgical Extraction, and we're seeing things like four Rest in Peace, two Graph Digger's Cage, two Rest in Peace. This is all to try and stop Hogak, which is just bodying all of these blue decks. Uh, we're seeing even Delver decks are running four Leyline of the Void in the sideboard, which was something that I was scared of when I first heard about the London Mulligan happening. Um, I think uh, I mentioned at the time, Leyline of the Void gets much better. And that was part of the reason why I did the shift over to Wismare, because Wismare is the best answer to Leyline from blue decks. But yes, there's just not much surgical running around. Black Red Reanimator's not doing very well for Veil of Summer reasons and Oko reasons. So they've just gone all in on trying to counter Hogak and to a further extent Dredge. So we're seeing little, uh, little surgical and we're adapting to that by just not running Silent Gravestone. We've got a Fairy Macabre over a fourth Leyline of the Void. This is just something that I've been trying out. Black Red Reanimator obviously is the main card that these Leyline of the Voids are trying to target. And um, sometimes you can just get them. They think you don't have a Leyline and you can just Macabre with them. Um, in just about every other matchup it's worse. But it is better in the uh, in the Black Red Reanimator matchup. And that's primarily what the Leylines are for. Like slightly better, slightly better, situationally better. It keeps them guessing, right? So, 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 say in game two, you just kill them on turn one. You don't even have a ley line, and they look at your graveyard and they see that you've had some good ley lines, but you've also got a fairy macabre. That makes them think, or maybe they won't see the fairy macabre, and you can just get them in game three. That that is, it's a mind game thing, really. It's 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 situational. It's mostly for the black red animator matchup. Um, second lotus pedal in the board. Um, Iona, that's mostly for TES and to an extent Belcher, which has been uh, all over the place, and um, and and Chain of Vapor as the fifth answer to Leyline. I actually, when I made the video about the the blue red list, I Chain of Vapor was really good in the videos. The fact that you could cast it on a blue source. The fact that it could just hit anything. It also has situational uses for us. You can bring it in against Black Red Reanimator. And if they just go for Elish Norm, again, you can just get them. Just bounce it back to their hand and punish them for being greedy and not getting a Gristlebrand first. Um, it gives you an out that you otherwise don't have to Elish Norm, basically. Um, though it's possible that we have other outs to Elish Norm now with two Ox of Agonis because this escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it so it will actually be a five well no what will it be it will be a three one and then you could conceivably just keep returning three ones and beat them while they block with the other one it's not very good it's not likely to happen but um we, we've got it's, it's more outs to black red um yeah that's the list if I was to take a list to a tournament featuring Ox of Agonis, it would look something like this. So not as crazy as the other one. We have the few three Putrid Imps. We have the uh, two Lotus Petals. Um, and um, Cyborg, just one Dread Return in the whole list, just one Ox. Uh, this is a bit more standard. Um, two Lotus Petals obviously makes bringing this back a bit easier, extra mana source, because uh, you need two mana sources to bring this back normally. Uh, this is a bit more normal, a bit more consistent, a bit more what's been tried and tested. And um, Sorry, I'm not showing the whole, uh, whole sideboard right now. And then, uh, there we go. 
Yes, so this is what I take to a paper tournament. Um, this. More tested, more standard, less changes, just an oxen for an Icarid. Um, swapping a threat for a threat, really. Um, uh, seeing how it pans out before you go something too crazy. Because, let's be real, three cards that don't help you win the game in your hand is a lot. So, um, yeah. So, this is the list we're going to be testing today. This is the the list which I think will uh, would be best for a paper tournament. And uh, we're going to test out. Alright, match one. Can't keep this. <coughs> uh, can't keep this. Can't keep this. Again, if this was a card that was useful. But, I mean, it would only be a putrid, which still probably isn't a keep. Um, this is good. One, two, three. As I always say, don't is this is this Belcher? Are we getting belched? Oh wait, no, Mox Diamond. I thought it was Chrome Mox. Ugh, God. Right. Um. I'm actually not going to do anything here. If I draw a dredger, I want to be able to get to threshold ASAP. Um, because when we eventually go off, we're going to have to play two. So we're actually better at discarding to hand size. So I'm going to do nothing here. Um, if we draw breakthrough, that somewhat changes this. But I still kind of don't want to expose um, Cephalid Colosseum to Wasteland. Uh, Faithless Looting's good here because it. Uh, not Faithless Looting, sorry. Um, oh, there we go. See, I can play out the Mana Confluence, but then if we get... Um, we're just going to get Wastelanded straight away. So, we've got to say to ourselves, what's more likely, we draw a Dredger or we draw a Third Land? Um, or Mana Source? I'm still inclined just to pass the turn here. The red source has extra bonus now with Oxidogonus because it allows you can do land plus lion's eye diamond to flashback um, Oxidogonus twice or escape it twice. So I, I'm going to call it flashback. That was a whole video. Because that's really what it is. It's like Dell flashback. <sighs> One thing you'll notice throughout this game is that 8 is a lot of cards. 8 is eight is a lot to exile. On paper you're like, ah, 8 cards, that's easy. But then when you actually start exiling cards from your graveyard, they're like, whoa, 8's a lot. Especially if you don't want to bring back Hogek a few times. It gets out of hand quite quick. Um, yeah, so my opponent's doing 4 colour loan things. Um, if he has a Knight the Reliquary, things could get a bit sad, but um, he's got two cards in hand, he's played a Bayou, so, yeah. So we've drawn the Ox, which isn't helpful here. Um, again, I'm just going to pass... I want to be able to Cephalid Colosseum, Lion's Eye Diamond, uh, with a Dredger. So if we draw a Dredger next turn, it might be best just to... Um... Oh, that sucks. Punished for not playing out the LED. Wow, really punished. Um... Bear mana confluence pass. Perhaps 
probably should have just played out the LED, but we can't really play around that. Like if they have a second chalice, they have a second chalice. With what we had in hand, we really are just looking for a. And it opens it up to getting a Brock Decade or whatever. Uh, I'll play out the Cephalid Coliseum now. This is actually looking okay. Kind of sucks we don't have access to. Um... Wouldn't be surprised if he cracks this to grab a Dryad Arbor now. Just to put more pressure. Yeah, sure. So he no longer has that or that. Yeah, there's the abrupt decay that could destroy our lines. I diamond if we had played it out. Um, why did he tap that? Oh, he cycled a barren ball. Okay, this is great. Here I am actually going to discard both breakthroughs and keep the gemstone mine because if he wastelands me next turn that means that I wouldn't be able to cast breakthrough if I kept breakthrough because of the chalice on one. So I'm going to keep the gemstone mine, that means if we do get wastelanded um, then we can do that. If not then we have um, access to uh, both cephalid colosseums. Right now I think we're still in decent shape, even though our life total is looking a bit low and um, a lot of our deck is locked out. We have a Dread Return in the deck, which makes things obviously a bit nicer. See, there we go. Life from the Loam is going to get back Wasteland, I expect, this turn and take out our Cephalid Coliseum. Which is annoying because that means we could potentially end up in a bad spot if we brick on dredges off this thing we did. But I mean, we're, we're 15 cards deep and we've seen one dredger, so odds are pretty good that we'll hit another one off of this. Okay, I mean, it's not the best dredger, but it's a dredger. What are you thinking about doing? Why are you pausing here? What is your game? The good thing is is that if he wants to abrupt decay his creature to kill his bridges, he loses his confidant. Which is great, because confidant's an annoying card. Um well, I should have thought about that a bit more. I should have discarded both stink redumps. Um, I often forget about the fact. Um, I'm semi-inclined to just force him to lose the Confidant now, partly because our life total is quite low, and also partly... Oh wait, we can't even do that anyway. Um, we can't force him to use the Abrupt Decay, but I expect he will. Sure, that's fine by me. Um, so we've got a lot of hits next turn. We can hit Hogak, we can hit... Um, whew, good thing you didn't draw that Oko. Um, we can hit Hogak off of this, we can hit a Dread Return and a Narc Amoeba and go crazy with Ox. We can hit some more bridges. Uh, okay, he's going to waste me again, I expect. Please don't play Knight of the Reliquary. Alright, Hogak doesn't do much because he's got a Caracas. Uh... 
It's not looking great, guys. I'm not going to lie. He's got his whole lower engine going. Um, by the looks of his, his hands, doesn't really do much, though. So that's good for us. He does not have a low in hand right now, as far as I'm aware. I think it's correct to not attack here, but I can see why he would. I think there's an argument to be made either way there. Um, annoying, we hit the... Uh, Might just be big grave troll time. If we can get the dread return. Like, how does he deal with that? Oko? Oko doesn't deal with grave troll very well because of the fact it's got counters on it. Um, that's probably better than bringing back Ox because our deck's actually quite small. And um, there's not much left in it. There's another Icarid we can hit, and there's two bridges. But um, we know the third Narcomoeba is on the bottom of the deck. We know there's a bridge on the bottom of the deck. Uh, we stacked it, bridge, Narcomoeba, random card. Um, a Lotus Petal is the bottom three. Um, so we know one of our bridges. We're probably not going to see this game. Maze of It's annoying, that turns off Grave Troll. Um, it's possible that the best play, if we do hit it, is to Dread Return Ox and go all the way deep into our deck to try and hit that last bridge, but that's a bit risky, I think. He's thinking a lot here, as he should be. It's possible that he just doesn't have anything that's not removal that's useless and lands. Because the deck is like half lands. Um, I'm expecting, given that there's blue in the deck, this is probably the list that won the format playoffs. That doesn't just have... Um, Ley lines in the side, it also has containment priests in the side, um, which means that Ox and Hogak will be doing work because Ox casts from the graveyard, which means that it um, avoids containment priests, which is nice. Some, uh, let's let's force him to kill if he's going to kill the dryad arbor let's force him to do it now 
rather than and make him use a removal spell rather than just swing in and have him trade. Ah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And the maze. Crikey, we've not seen Hogak. Um, we've got all three Ikrids in the graveyard. Another problem. Uh, so we have one, two. So we've got one Thug, one Putrid Imp, and two Stinkweed Imps left in the deck as Ikrid fuel. I'm actually not going to return the Icarids this turn because what he's to do is he'll block and then maze the other one and then return back the um, Dryad Arbor with life in the loam. And we're just running out of black creatures left in the deck. So I won't do that. There's some argument to be made to draw a card. Um... But I think it's better to dredge. Um, um One, two, three. Bring back three acrids, swing with all of them. Trades with one. We reanimate. Um, the fact he's got wasteland and dryad arbor is really annoying here. Because we know where the um, the bridge is. Hmm. He's got all of the lands that are bothersome to us. And that knight threatens to end the game. If he taps that wasteland, that's great for us. But he has not. I don't see a way out of this. Like, we return all three equids here, he just blocks two and mazes. We return all three equids, sack them all, return a grave troll, it just gets mazed indefinitely. Uh, we return Hogak, it gets Caracas. We try and get bridges, he exiles the bridges by wastelanding his Dryad Arbor. The only thing that I can think of that might potentially get us out of this is returning Ox. Um, and in order to do that we need to uh, get, a, get a land. So... My Exile Hogak... Exhaust stink we don't. Exhaust stink we don't. Draw a card. That is not useful. Um,
Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe we can use that to our advantage. The problem is that Dread Return on Ox now decks us because we have to draw three and draw extinct with him. Um, this isn't useful. These do no damage and then we're dead on board. Yeah, whatever we do here, we die. Um, doing this is probably the best thing. Even then, I think we're dead. Like, nothing's good. We can't dredge this because we die. Huh? Oh, yeah, we've got an Archibald that we know is not on the bottom. Oh. In that case, so maybe I made a mistake. I should have dredged. I thought I thought we only had one Archibald left when it was in the bottom of the deck. Um. I don't have changed anything. Not really. No. Wouldn't have really changed anything. Concede. Alright. Well, that was rough. So we bring in Ash and Rider, Lotus Petal, Whisper, 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 Whisper. This was a multi four as well. I think that's important to bear in mind. Um, take out an Ox. Take out a Therapy. Take out a Petal. Maybe it's better to keep in the oxes rather than the lootings. The problem is that you need something to sort of start off the dredge. I still like looting versus chalice decks. I'm not really too sure at the moment whether it's better to keep in an ox over a looting and side out a looting now that ox gets through chalice. Um, I could side out a thug. Maybe that's correct. But then we're really low on black creatures for um, Icarid, but we've only got three. This is a bit greedy. I really don't like siding out the fourth thug. Since we're on the play, I think I won't. Um, There's an argument to be made that maybe we just don't need Ash and Rider um, in this matchup now that we've got Hogak and Ox. But it can be hard to beat Tabernacle sometimes if they have um, Knight, Knight plus Tabernacle. Ash and Rider can get us out of those situations. And it's just one card, really. I mean, it's two, but we already have a main deck for a job return. Um, yeah. I don't like it because it's got two Nark Amoebas and doesn't do anything. We need to draw a Dredger and another land. This is better. We bottom Wispmare here. If he goes turn one, Mox. Chalice, we chain his mocks, which is a fun play.
My big containment priest. Yeah, this is the list I was talking about with the containment priests. Um, I'm going to play out the land. Possible we could have cha saved chain for containment priest, but I mean, have fun trying to chain a containment priest. Like, they'll flash it at end of turn and then you'll try and bounce it and they'll have mana up. Like, they're not tapping their lands. Um, I really want to save the looting for the ox. Or find another land so that we can cast creatures. Um, basically what I'm saying is I don't want to just cast looting here because it achieves nothing. Because uh, we need to find some way to cast something through Containment Priest. So I'm just going to pass. Second containment priest. Oh, Thalia. That's annoying, but again, we can cast Ox through Thalia, which is cute. There's a land. Does that make it worth going for it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we need to wait a turn. If we play the land, I'll play out the land. Uh, I'm gonna do this on the, on the name Knight of the Reliquary. Okay, that's good. Another thing about uh, Ox with Lion's Eye Diamond is now that you have to crack it um, for colours you wouldn't necessarily want to, um, it can sometimes make things quite awkward. Two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. So we crack this for red. Yeah, I don't think this is getting any better for us. Um, I'm going to use... Yeah, I'm going to use that, that, that. Okay, that sucks. Um... Don't really know what to say here, we're just dead. They're gonna punish him for us, swing for six. Hmm. Yeah, we're just dead. That was annoying. Maybe I should have sandbagged the chain for containment priest.
don't know why he's not just killing me. Seems rude. I'm just going to concede. Ugh. Rough game, Bob. Oh, just mulled my hand. Uh, it had no lands. <laughs> um, this is close to a keep. I, I'm often aggressive to mull hands like this, but sometimes you just mull hands like this and then never get another good hand. This hand is acceptable, especially on the draw. On the play, I'd be probably less inclined to keep this. Um, on the draw, I think this is fine. It's got multiple avenues to do stuff. Uh, against Delver, this hand's not very good. Oh. Suddenly this hand got a whole lot better. This is the thing with Putrid Imp, guys. The cards are made... And it resolved. Like, how do we lose this game? How? And watch me lose this game. But how do we lose this game? Because this card... This card is magnificent. It's just a magnificent card. I know they've got a Force of Will in hand. So that really sucks for them. Um... Yeah, it's fine. The worst thing he could do is kill the Putrid Imp. So I hope he doesn't do that. But people don't bolt it. People don't bolt Putrid Imp enough. Putrid Imp, you see Putrid Imp, you bolt Putrid Imp. That's, that's the truth, guys. You see it, you bolt it. Don't mess around, just bolt it. Um, because I know they have a Force of Will in hand, uh, I'm not going to mess around trying to go... Cabal therapy, careful study stuff, because he's holding up open mana. You could have, you could have a uh, spell pits or something as well. Um, I'm not gonna mess with that because uh, I don't care. Instead, what I will do is I will just discard and dis um, play a land and discard. We could get stifled here, but uh, I'm not a weakling, and I don't care. That's a really bad time to do that. That is not when you want to do that. Because that lets me do this. That's also the reason I should have played out the Cephalic Colosseum before discarding a card to it. But, um, he misplayed there and, uh, counteracted my misplay. So he's probably just going to shame scoop now, I expect. If I was him, I'd shame scoop. There we go. Delver boarding. You could take out a breakthrough, bring in the Lotus Petal, but frankly, when we're down to just this few stuff, I'm inclined to just keep it as is. They could be on Ley Lines, in which case, Lamal, let's go to game three. When you see Delver players mull very low, sometimes you can just kill them with Putrid Imps and Golgari Thugs. Because they take out uh, a lot of their um, just like interactive stuff. They generally keep the bolts in, but uh, you can sometimes just get them if they bowl really low. Like they just draw cantrips and counter spells, and uh, don't hit any lightning bolts. And you can just ride a putrid imp to victory and a few golgari thugs. I've had that happen a few times when Delvers bring in uh, Ley Lines. Because it's actually not a deck that draws off the top very well. All of the cards sort of do nothing on their own. Um, it's only when the deck has all of its stuff that it does well. This is a Sneep.
I think I will discard this hand to hand size. Discard this to hand size just because this hand does nothing if Lion's Eye Diamond gets countered here. Um. Um, it's unlikely that he keeps uh, two on top with preordain and doesn't have something. And drawing a Stinkweed Imp is great here because that means if we do get Soja called on the Grave Troll we still have uh, stuff to do. Or it could just be that he's got a Grafflinger's Cage on top of his deck, in which case we could just uh, lose. Such is life. Okay. That means you can start a surgical. If he has a surgical, he's not using it. Let's get some counter spells. It's probably actually a bad play because we've got no other dredger in graveyard. I didn't notice that. I wouldn't have made this play had I been aware of that fact. In fact, I'd have probably led Mana Confluence if I was aware, if I was going to make this play and I was aware, but we might actually get screwed over now. Yeah, because he's going to force that. Um, uh, we could just we could just break through here, but I don't even really like that. I don't like that. I don't like that play. This is obviously bad if they have Wasteland. I'm not going to return Icarid because that means that if I cast Bright Thrux as one next turn, that means that I get... Um, this is all obviously dependent on them, not just wastelanding me here. Um, if they counter breakthrough, we still have Cephalid Colosseum the turn after. Um, yeah, we're getting kind of screwed over because we didn't just discard to hand size again. I did not look at my graveyard, and I'm getting punished for it. That's uh, step one of Dredge. Actually be aware of what's in your graveyard. Um... So we are not doing this. That's a really good draw. this trigger on the stack we're going to do this Gonna discard Icarid, Stink Weed and Grave Troll. Well, I mean, it somewhat depends on what we draw as well here. Okay. 
Hmm. Maybe I should have actually discarded the uh, Cabal Therapy there just so we can protect ourselves from days with this Fatal Sluice. Rather than discarding the Icarid that doesn't actually do anything right now. That was probably correct. I didn't think about that for long enough. All in all, I'm not playing this game very well. All this pausing is making me think that he has a surgical extraction, um, which is fine. That means that hopefully his last card's not days. Um, I hope he does surgical me. Okay, that's like the weirdest choice. That might well just lose in the game. Though he does have a Dreadwood Arcanist to flash it back, so... Whatever. Great, now I just need to hit a bridge from below and not have this get counted. Um, oh shit, yeah, I couldn't have hit a bridge there because of uh, funny that I did though. So I really want to take the last card of, our, of their hand. Um, their last card's a lightning bolt we just lose, so I don't think it is. I think it's probably a force of will. Um, could be a lightning bolt. This is really tough. Next time we can just cast Ox from the graveyard. Um, maybe it's correct just to be able to take every card out of his hand. But it's also important just to dredge. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Please no lightning bolt. I'm going to name Days, even though I think he's got a Force of Will in hand, just because that's the only thing that we lose to. Uh, okay, he's got nothing. Um, we could have actually... Wow, I didn't think of that. We could have discarded the Dread Return rather than the Stink Weedimp and then sacked everything to Dread Return back the Ox of Agonis. So that was actually probably the best play. I really didn't think of that. But that, again, this is one of the things about having Dread Return and Ox of Agonis in the main deck. Um, that would have been way better. Yeah, I should have done that. That would have been really good. Because we'd have sacked the Hogak. Um... Yeah, that would have been a way better play. I, I honestly didn't even think of that. Wow, that would have been so much better. I'm not used to playing with main deck Dread Return with this Ox. This Ox I am not used to yet. But, uh... Yeah, I think we're in a pretty good spot here. Still. This card's very hard for them to deal with. Um, if he swings, we go, we block there, we block there, we take one, two, three, four, go to five. What he's got isn't going to beat what we have. Um,
That's even worse than the attacks I was thinking, I think. Wow, okay. I mean, that just seems wrong. So I have to make these blocks. These are somewhat forced blocks. I am going to return an Icarid here. Okay, so that's interesting. Again, we don't have enough to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, we can't, we can't do that. Um, I prefer not to go down too low on life. One, two, three, go to three. I think we have to attack with these two. Not doing so I think is a mistake. Let's see what we draw off this. Force of well. Okay. Um. I mean, we could flash back Oxvagonus. I guess that's kind of free, but then we lose Hogak. Um. Which means it isn't really that free. I like just passing here. We're dead to bolt, but I mean, when are you not dead to bolt? Whew, that was close. Oh, that was a 2 0. Whew, easy game. <laughs> Right for round three. Wow. 
Why is my music bar working? Oh, that's annoying. Um, it's a seven. I don't like this. Like this is close, but we can do better. And is this better? Marginally better, but not really. This doesn't do this, and you can't just do this. If you could just do this, that'd be amazing. Um, sounds bad. Uh, this is serviceable. Just kidding, it's not. It's terrible. I think we'd rather have the careful study than the grave troll. Uh, than the putrid people. Should have kept the seven. Perfect. Better lucky than good, eh? Some people make the mistake on Magic Online of countering the spell in response to the trigger. So you can sometimes get people, but in order for the trigger to go on after the spell, you need to click the spell first and then um, cast tap the mana after. And if you do that, wow. Okay, I mean, he just really screwed himself by not just casting that on the careful study, I guess. But whatever, what can you do? Um, Bug Delver. Ouch, that's big. I think it's worth it just to name Oko Thief of Crowns here, just because if that resolves, we're in a terrible situation. Okay, that's fine. A-OK, -okay, I'm fine with that. If we have rubbed a case in my Narcomy, but that kind of sucks. But it's not the end of the world. Wastelands me. He should abrupt a me here. Because I can hit a bridge from below. And then his abrupt decay looks a bit silly. Like what happened just now. Um... I'm just going to pass the turn. I can swing, sack Narcomy, but target myself. But we know he's got a daze, so we'll just daze it. Um, and then he can abrupt decay my Narcomy. And doing this means we can take f six damage less uh, by just chumping the Tarmogoyf, and we can just slow dredge. And hopefully, slow dredge our way out of this. Because let's be honest, if you're in that situation, we really don't want to give this guy a zombie token. That could represent all sorts of bad stuff. I'm not going to return that, obviously, because it's the only dredger. 
great. That's really good. That's exactly what I want to see. Um, again, I'm not going to swing. I don't want to take six. I'm probably going to chump. Second golf. That's fine. He has to dice this. I don't want to go to two, but that might be correct. The correct play by him, I think, is just abrupt decay the zombie and swing for 12. Actually, because he's got the abrupt decay, I'm just going to chump here. Can we get a Narc Amoeba up in here? No, but we can get three bridge from belows. But he's just going to abrupt decay his own time ago. Or do that. Okay, I mean, that's us dead. Ugh, annoying. Still, this is a good matchup. Run it back. No changes. Sneep! Hello, people! Are you seeing what I'm seeing? We're actually going to bottom a cephalid coliseum. A man can only need so many cephalid coliseums. Okay, that's playable. That's beatable. Wow. 
That's aggressive. Okay, that's more than I was hoping to get. I was hoping to name Brainstorm there. He's got obviously got something he wants to protect. Might be a surgical. But that's whatever. No black sauce to crack the spell bomb. I'm fine for him to waste my cephalic colosseum. Wow. I don't think he'll crack the spell bomb here. I don't think he'll want to. He should crack it now, but this is terrible for him. Okay. I think I just keep slow dredging here. I see no reason. There's nothing on two scale. Like, you can dro drop a Tarmogoyf, but I'm not really too concerned about that. Um, the more cards I can have in hand make it better for when we eventually want to fight through the spell bomb. Um, Rude! 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 No! Crack the spell bomb! No! The audacity! I mean, this is still okay. I'm happy to trade either of these creatures for a Hex Drinker, or specifically the Putrid Imp. This man has every hex drinker. Gasp. These are bad together, so he'll probably block the putridum. So I'm not going to let him. I'm going to discard the Icarid to the putridum. Again, I'm going to keep this mana confluence in hand. Uh, just because we want more things to discard to the Lion's Eye Diamond if we want to go off. One, two, three, four. Petty Theft targeting Putrid Imp. I mean, that's fine. I can recast it next time. I'll buy him some time, but not loads. One, two, 
two, three, four, five. If he swings, I block with Putrid Imp. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. If he swings, I think I snap block the the hex drink with the counter on it. I think I block because that sort of forces him to crack the Nihil spell bomb. Because next turn I'll be threatening to bring back an Icarid, and then that'll do a lot of damage. Um, so I can't really take much more damage here. Oh no! Stupid sexy elf man. I detest him so much. Cretinous individual. There's no point attacking, there's no point doing anything. It makes no difference. The card's too good. I mean, it's not helping we've drawn zero loot spells. But, uh... I think I just have to threaten his life total. Attacking Oko is so pointless. Because he gains so much loyalty. We can potentially do something with this.
Uh, I'm not going to do anything here, I'm just going to pass. That seems like the best course of action. Because if I swing, he can flash in Brazen Borrower, and um, that's no good. This is like the worst line. This line could like actually lose him the game. I don't know what his hand is, but oh, <laughs> all right. This guy clearly wants it more than I do. I think he's got four of them. We have to trump this. somewhat priced into doing this here I think I guess we have one turn no we don't because he can just turn the food into a So I eat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What am I not eating? Oh, I'm missing a lion's eye diamond. Maybe it's better to crack LED for red there than blue. We could have saved some life. Um, this is funny. I don't think I actually want to. Um, Discard Stink Redump. I want to try and bait him into cracking the spell bomb because we're not dead next turn. So I think leaving looting in hand is our best chance of not being dead. So this has been an interesting turn of events. Um, Ox is clearly. 
saving us from dead on board. Um, Game's a joke. Um, the most hilarious part is we're not even dead next turn. Uh, we're close to dead. But not totally dead. So let's start with this. All right. No! No! We're like actually dead now. Not even like I think we're dead. We're like actually dead. This is this is lethal. We tried our best. Let's look at it that way. We tr we tried. We truly tried. The man had three nihil spell bombs and a surgical. Sometimes they just want it more than you. And also sometimes they play uh, graveyard hate that you don't expect. If we won game one here, we could side in both Leyline of Sanctities in game three and have a decent shot. But we didn't because we mulled to three. Um, lost. Um, yeah. It is what it is. But I think we finally have to scoop. Sadly. Good game, though. Alright, come on, guys. Not to be uh, ruined by that last game. Let's redeem ourselves. We've been getting a lot of O2s and 2Os. I don't like this hand. I actually mull. Whenever I see just these two and one land, I always mull. Unless I'm like low on cards. Um, this still does nothing. If there was a gold land rather than a Colosseum, uh, this would be okay. Um... Does nothing. Alright. This is good. Uh, one, two. I'm actually going to put the ox on the bottom, I think. Just because we've got. We've got. Uh, like, if he's got wasteland, we can still get an ox if we draw another land. We've got two oxes in the deck. Um, 
there's lots of reasons it's good to have a second land generally speaking it makes breakthrough a better live draw if this gets counterspelled um, this looks like storm wow as if like magic so we'll do this uh, that's a shitty draw isn't it This isn't going too well. This isn't going too well. Oh, is it TES? Okay. I'm going to just cast this here. not really putting much pressure on him here uh, potentially if we can hit an ox then we're in a good spot I'd like to point out that if we kept the ox we still wouldn't have drawn the second land to use the ox so off of the looting so we'd be in no better shape in terms of returning an ox I would like to return an ox just so we get some uh, big ox gameplay you know that's why we're all here. But all in all, Ox has been decent, but it's not been so good that I'm like wanting to add more than one or two. It's definitely not a four of, as you can see. When you do get it, it eats a lot of your graveyard to even use it. Um, Wish Claw. Oh, is it the Breach Storm deck? Infernal Tutor for um, Infernal Tutor for Brain Freeze, Brain Freeze Kill Us. But he doesn't have enough cards. Oh yeah, he will now. Okay. So this is the Underworld Breach deck. Um, there's been some discussion about putting this card in Dredge. I'm planning on doing a video on this. Uh, I've not really thought of a list for this in Dredge. Because I think it requires changing the deck up a lot. But I think it has potential. The main problem is that it costs 2 mana. Uh, who are you targeting? Targeting all at himself. Sure, I want to see how his deck's constructed. I've seen. Um, main deck cling to dust. Wow. Right, that's a problem. Targeting at me, I'm going to scoop. I don't want to show in my deck, but I am dead. 
Um, I've never played against this deck before, this is the first time. But I assume you want Ley Lines. If we had a fourth Ley Line, I'd bring it in. We want Iona, we want Dread Return. We probably don't want that, we probably don't want that. We can probably trim an Icarid. This is a greedy thing I've been doing now that we have two Oxes in the deck. Just going down to two Icarids. Um, Can't trim another Golgari thug. I'll cut a uh, petal just because we're bringing in Leyline of the Void. Um, I mean, that's a keep. Sucks. I assume my owner on blue is just a game ender a lot of the time. dead. As you can see, one of the downsides of uh, sliding out all of the black creatures uh, is that happens. Into dust, echoing truth, echoed. That's fine. Because we've got this now. Yep. Don't see a reason to change this. Yeah, this seems like a keep, right? I mean, they can't combo through ley line, so. Well, as far as I'm aware, they can't. Diamonds. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Again, I really don't know the list, but I see no reason not to play out Lion's Eye Diamond. I feel like I'm more afraid of them having discard than I am of uh, them destroying these. And I'm somewhat insulated from any cheese that destroys them because of the... Uh, Gonna go off and not mess around. If he has cling to dust here, then well, I mean, fine, I guess. That's fine. Annoying, but fine. <laughs> I do love it when that happens. 
That does make me very happy. The interesting thing is that now we can hit an ox from the two red. Oh, we hit an ox. <laughs> no, it's, it's almost inconceivable that this man could not have got more punished than he just has for his plays. Not that they're wrong, I think they're entirely right, but the single target grave hate versus dredge is just a bit pathetic, really. Um, it's so hard to see what you've clicked on. You need to exile two more. See what I mean? It eats your whole graveyard. I don't want to eat any of these remaining cards. I guess I'll eat an Icarid and I'll eat a bridge. Because we've got two bridges. Oh, there was another Lion's Eye Diamond I didn't eat. I didn't need to eat a bridge. I don't think that will punish us too much, but... I need to get better at working out what it is that they are... Uh, I'm actually uh, have or do not have. I am going to snap sack the Bark Amoeba. Don't know why the pictures aren't loading all of a sudden. It normally loads the pictures. Maybe this is a bug from the newest uh, uh, release. Veil, vale. sure. I don't know much about their deck, but I'm pretty sure that they can't win through Iona on blue with the ley line in play. Um, because they had Echoing Truth to try and answer my. Uh, uh, Leyline last game. I mean, that's fine. Is he going to exile my graveyard with Silent Gravestone? That'd be funny. Don't bring this card in against Dredge, it's too slow. And he scoops up his cards. Nice. That's interesting. I've not played that match up before. I sort of made it up as we went along there. But it worked well. And the Ox went really well. The Ox was really, really good there. I mean, we did have two LEDs. But he had Grave Hate. So who's the, who's the real lucker? Who's the real lucker? Me for drawing two LEDs? I have four. Or him for drawing his Cling to, cling to Dust? Think about that. Think about that, guys. Sorry, I just mulled the first hand. It had no lands. Um, second hand also has no lands. Uh, keep. Bottom, bottom. Hand seems good. This looks like Delver. It is Delver. Uh, let's take some Force of Worlds out of their hand. There's the first Force of Will. Do you have the second Force of Will? I'm going to cast Faith of Sluting just in case he has a uh, Wasteland. We draw exactly. Um, We draw exactly Cephalid Colosseum. It doesn't flip, which means it's probably a land. Could be a creature. Dreadhorde Arcanists. I'm not too concerned about it. He doesn't have any cantrips in the graveyard. Uh, okay, that's a Cephalid Colosseum. I guess we live with. Yeah. We do this, I think. Uh, uh. Looting like mad. I want to hit a dredger. Oh my god. It's one of them games. 
I could have waited a turn on the looting, but I mean, come on, we've dug so far. We should, if we just hit a dredger, there, that's great. This is like worst case scenario. Um, that's probably the reason why you want to wait. Um, okay, so this is fine. Not great, but acceptable. The annoying thing is that we've hit. Um, we have hit two Narcomoebas already. And they've just flipped a Ponder, which is terrible because that means they can not only flip Delver, they also get to use it with Dreadhall Arcanist. Um, this has been a really bad turn of events. We had a couple of really bad things that happened there. We could have waited a turn on the looting, but that wouldn't have even made the situation substantially better for us. Um, yeah, it's just not been very good for us. Um, This is like almost worst case scenario, he chooses not to shuffle, that means there's probably a lightning bolt in the top few cards. Uh, this game's still winnable though, uh, if we hit something like that. Um, I'm not I'm not going to swing, I don't want to lose my uh, bridge right now. Um, I'm going to name Lightning Bolt. I think he probably put that on the top. Yeah, that's fine. Um, just going to pass turn. If he swings with just an aberration on that element, yeah. Lightning bolt. Oh, wow. Well, I don't like that play very much. But I expect I'll probably bolt the Narc Amoeba or just bolt my face. Either or is good. If he doesn't bolt the Narc Amoeba, uh, I'll probably... Yeah, he's bolting Narc Amoeba. Um, this is really bad. I think we have to block here. We've gotten quite unlucky this game, but it happens, that's the deck. Um, so we have an Oxen Yard. Are we dead on board? We are just dead on board. Okay, so this guy doesn't have any ley lines in the board from what I can see online. He's got a cage, a spell bomb, and two surgicals. Um, with that, I'm inclined to just run it back. Maybe bring in a pestle. We've not been having very lucky game ones against Delver this league. I don't even think that hand was bad. That hand seemed really good. We just didn't hit any dredges. The the play where we was questionable was whether we should have just cast the looting or waited a turn. Um, I can't keep this against Delver. Like if they waste you, if they counter and then waste you, you just lose the game. Okay, this is not ideal, but passable. Uh, annoying we have to put so many dredges on the bottom of the library, but what can you do? At least if they surgical us, that shuffles them in. That's not good for us. If we don't draw a land here, I might just. Oh god. Yeah. 
this isn't good. Sometimes you do just get delved, even game one. Uh, like, it's generally a combination of bad things happening plus getting delved that does it. Okay, this is good. I'm going to get dazed here, but, I mean, what can you do? Okay, I'm not getting dazed, so fine. That's a mistake, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. This guy chooses not to shuffle, which, given he's got no counter spells and he chooses not to shuffle, to me that means he's got either um, Nihil Spell Bomb or. Okay. I mean, that seems bad. That seems not great. Though maybe he's just got a second piece of hate, and then this is a fine play. Make me just commit every single thing I have and then just exile my graveyard. Or put me under a cage. If he plays Dreadhorde Arcanist here, that kind of sh sucks as well. Yeah. But uh, we, if we hit bridge here, we're okay. Okay, we don't hit bridge. We are not okay. So now we need to draw some lands. He's going to exile our Icarids, which is fine. We only have three, but we we need to we need to top deck lands and then start hard casting thugs. Problem being, there's two thugs on the bottom of our deck. They this surgical shuffle them, which is fine. Oh yeah, they've already been shuffled because of the previous surgical. Um, Again, when people say bring in something like um, bring in gravestone to stop things like this happening, gravestone would not have helped us here. We mulled, we we needed every card we kept in our hand there, and we had one land. If they have surgical, they 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 would have counted it. If they didn't have surgical, what they'd have done is they'd have just let it resolve and then just wasted us and then countered our next spell. And then that's just terrible. Um, we got to draw lands here. Okay, well that's good in that if we hit a land it can help us draw a second land. Um, but I'm not going to lie, I don't think we're winning this game, especially with that coming down. I think we've gotten quite unlucky against Delver this league, but um, we've had some not so great hands, and part of that's the fact that we've had to cut some of the uh, cards that help us go off to fit in the Ox and the, the Dread Return. Um, while it's not a massive deal, it does make a difference. Um, I think we're just dead now, pretty much. Taking one, two, three, four, five. Uh, next time we'll be taking six. Even if we draw a land, it's very unlikely. They, they've got a force of negation in hand that we know about. So we probably want to open with that rather than trying to. And they're probably also sandbagging a wasteland if they have any sense. Um, so, yeah. I think we've pretty much lost this game. I don't see us winning it anytime soon. Um. Especially not with that Delver flipping. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If Delver flips, I'm just going to scoop. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
and that's lethal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, sometimes you can't beat it. Um, it is what it is. Okay, so uh, so yeah. This is what we played to a mediocre finish of two and three. Not great. Um, I don't think our losses are necessarily because of the changes that we've made to the deck here with the Ox. Um, there were certainly times when Ox was actually good for us. Um, I think potentially it needs more work um, before the ox came out I was experimenting with having the second petal in the main deck like that uh, I think I might have the list somewhere uh, this one I think yeah this is what I was experimenting with before the uh, Ox came out. This was this was the list I was looking at, just because it gives you an extra sideboard slot. Um, so maybe that's a good thing to try with the uh, with the Ox. I think another thing is right now people are super duper prepared for graveyard decks. There is Underworld Breach running around. There's Hogak running around. There's Dredge running around. There's the TES list. There's Belcher. There's a lot of very degenerate combo decks which all use the graveyard and dredge is one of them so i think we're getting hit with collateral at the moment as well um which is fine um yeah uh i'm definitely going to be doing some more tuning of this list um and i might do a video with underworld breach in dredge the price of that card's gone up a lot recently online and I don't want to pay how much it's being costed for because I think it's just a hype train at the moment um, which I think will die down also I've got some testing for a modern tournament and what have you coming up um, but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video um, this is definitely an area for um, development I think the ox has potential as I said, I think Street Wraith is an avenue for looking at. I think more Lotus Petals is an avenue for looking at. I think the Dread Return main deck is an avenue for looking at. So, yeah, I think there's a, a lot that can be done with this, and I think it's an interesting uh, development for the deck. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though we didn't end up doing too well. Um, I think it's nice to show the games where the deck fails to perform or doesn't perform as well, because at the end of the day... This is a game of variance. Even the very best players struggle to get over, I mean, 70%. If you can get a 70% win rate, that's just absurd. Most even good players don't get much above 65% win rate. Um, if, you've, if you've got over a 70% win rate, you've either broken the meta or you're just, like, uh, insane. Because that, that's a... That's a very, very high win rate. There are only a few players that can claim to have a win rate that high um, consistently. So you, you will have those bad leagues as well as those good leagues. And you can't let it get you down because Magic's a game of variance. And uh, your opponent's trying to win just as hard as you are. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully that was interesting. Um, this was quite... A quick video I wanted to get it out sooner rather than later so this list isn't as tuned as I would have liked but I just wanted to show what my ideas are around this list and uh, show how it performs and what it can do hope you all enjoyed um, remember to do the YouTube stuff <laughs>